how times have changed and hopefully for the better. Good night, everyone. I'm Renee Poussant in Atlanta. How does it feel to have spent millions of dollars in more than a year of your life trying to get a job and fail? I'll take a look at how the almost presidential nominees are faring as the winner gets ready to take the spotlight. Coming up. I'm Gail Pennybacher. Federal authorities in Alexandria say they may have foiled a Libyan-backed plot to assassinate an American high-level government official. I'll tell you more about that coming up. This is Frank Herzog at Redskins Training Camp in Carlisle. Dexter Manley is being investigated by the National Football League for substance abuse. We'll have reactions here from the Redskins, and Kevin Kiley will have the latest from Dexter Manley, tonight on News 7. From WJLA-TV, Washington, D.C., the news continues. From the nation's capital, this is News 7 at 6. Good evening, I'm Dale Solly. And I'm Renee Poussant in Atlanta. I'll have all the news from the Democratic Convention in just a few moments. But, Dale, I understand there's been word of a small plane crash at Dulles. That there has, Renee, and one person is dead because of it. The plane is a twin-engine, propeller-driven charter aircraft that crashed on takeoff just less than two hours ago. New 7's Rhea Blakey joins us live now from Dulles Airport with the very latest. Rhea. Dale, we do in fact have an update for you. At 5 o'clock, we thought there may have been two people on board. We are told at this hour that there was only one individual on board. Apparently, that was in fact a fatality. We also asked the question of whether or not this crash may have been weather-related. And we are told that that was not in fact the case, that weather had nothing to do with it. It was not raining at the time of the takeoff at about 4.10. Very quickly, want to let you know that uh, there were a number of eyewitnesses to this particular incident. We have a crew down getting tape on the scene. We want to let you know that the runway 19L is now, in fact, open. So that is no longer hampering the situation. However, the investigation obviously will continue for a while. I spoke with a gentleman who is a member of the Pan Am security team here, and he told me that he seemed to notice that the plane took off too fast, had too much airspeed. This is his assessment and not mine. He says he is a pilot, and in fact, he noticed when the plane first took off that it had too much speed and not enough pitch, if I understand correctly. And so to him, he saw that in fact the crash was imminent. We are also told that this plane, the small uh, twin-engine turboprop auto, burst into flames when it hit trees near the end of the runway. That is the updated situation at this hour. We will have more information for you as it becomes available to us. And again, we will try and show you pictures and bring you eyewitness reports as well of this terrible uh, plane crash that killed one individual here at Dulles. All right, thank you very much, Rhea Blakey. We can tell you, too, that it was on a maintenance flight, a normal maintenance flight going from Dulles to, uh, to National Airport. And according to airport manager Dexter Davis told me just a little while ago, there was no disruption of service out of Dulles because of the crash. But again, we will be following the story. And again, thank you, Rhea Blakey. Blakey, elsewhere tonight, eight people are under arrest in what a federal prosecutor is calling an assassination scheme. This linked to Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. As Virginia Bureau Chief Gail Pennybacher tells us, the FBI's investigation focused on a pro-Libyan student group and a travel agency. Federal authorities believe a plot to assassinate a high-level government official could have been planned in this McLean office building. An organization known as the People's Committee for Libyan Students is based here. It was licensed by the U.S. Treasury Department two years ago to provide financial aid for Libyan students in the United States and Canada. The federal government believes that money was diverted. The funds allegedly used instead to fund a subversive network who traveled illegally to Libya for anti-American protests. Today, FBI agents arrested eight people, six in the Washington area. They searched the PCLS offices as well as this Washington travel agency. It's believed the illegal travel arrangements were made here. During arraignment this afternoon, U.S. Attorney Henry Hudson told the court the arrest mark a rare case, one involving national security. Hudson says because the issue is so sensitive, he must refrain from making revealing remarks. And because of that, Dale, it is almost a mysterious case here, one that is intriguing, one we'll know more about on Friday when there is a detention hearing. We're getting a severe thunder thunderstorm right now in Alexandria, but you can be sure this is a case that we will definitely be telling you more about. All right, thank you very much, Gail Pennybacher. Now, this is the third day at Carlisle for the Redskins, of course, but you know that there is another controversy that we must tell you about, a controversy not involving quarterbacks, but one Dexter Manley. Let's go live now to Kevin Kiley in the newsroom for details. Kevin. 
Thank you, Dale. Dexter Manley currently is under investigation after testing positive for a minor substance in a urine test. The substance is unknown at this time. He and his attorney, Bob Wolf, are scheduled to meet with the NFL on Friday. It was the Washington Post that reported Dexter tested positive for drugs. At 5 o'clock in an interview with Dexter's attorney, Bob Wolf, Wolf told me he could not confirm the Post story. Well, uh, again, you know, you're just taking what was out of the newspaper. Uh, that was not uh, the gist of the conversation we had with the commissioner, who was more interested in uh, how Dexter was getting along uh, with his alcohol problem and uh, wh whether he was getting the aftercare, because the National Football League is very protective of their league and of what's going on in the league. And uh, again, uh, all these other things I really don't know anything about. I don't want to add any credence to it, and I just feel that for me to keep elaborating on it, you know, I'm really in a state of confusion. I want to come out of this thing uh, A-OK, -okay, um, and I think that my attorney and I will handle that. Dexter did tell me uh, in that conversation that he has no drug problem. I asked him specifically, he said he didn't. We'll have more of that exclusive interview with Dexter Manley, plus we'll go to Carlisle and Frank Herzog with the Redskins reaction, all that coming up later in sports. All right, thank you very much, Kevin Kiley. Still ahead on the news tonight, we are going back to Atlanta. We'll be talking there with Mayor Barry in just a couple of minutes, so stay with us. Everyone. I think I've been very bad. There seems to be a misunderstanding about Bob's breakfast bar. I took one of everything. I couldn't stop myself. We want you to take whatever you like. Honest. I took three helpings. I only paid once. Right in front of the children. You can have all you want. Really. I'm afraid if I have the chance, I'll do it again. Big Boy's All-You-Can-Eat Breakfast Bar. Perfectly delicious and perfectly legal. Hey, do me a favor and don't assume you know what I'll drive. Fact is, I went to a Jeep Eagle dealer, and I'm glad I did, for a lot of reasons. One reason is the 1988 Eagle Premier, the car with European sophistication and handling, with more interior room than Cressida, better highway mileage than Maxima, and a powertrain warranty longer than anything coming out of Japan. Hey, we've all got standards. Mine are high. See your national capital area Jeep Eagle dealers. Nancy knows her frozen dinner will taste perfect because she cooks an Armour Dinner Classics with a new micro-ready indicator, while across town, Frank cooks another brand and guesses. I guess it's not undercooked. Uh, I guess it's not overcooked. I guess it's done. Oh, uh, guess I guessed wrong. Guess Frank should have bought Armour, like Nancy, because Armour's indicator turned blue, telling her dinner's cooked. Mmm, perfect. Armour Dinner Classics cooks perfect, so it tastes perfect. If others cared as much as lens crafters, they'd all deliver quality glasses in about an hour. But many can't because they don't have in-store labs. And many don't because fast to them is anything from a few hours to a few weeks. A lens crafters took exactly an hour. Lens crafters one hour delivery is very important to me. One hour, one choice. Lens crafters. Lens crafters, custom crafted eyeglasses in about an hour. Seven DC locations including Fair Oaks, Landover Mall, and Potomac Mills. Call 1-800-522-LENS for the store near you. I'm Renee Poussaint here in Atlanta. Things are just beginning to get underway tonight. Tonight is the night that the deed will be done. Michael Dukakis' name will be placed in nomination. Jesse Jackson's name will also be placed in nomination tonight, but more so as a symbolic gesture. Rumors have been flying all day that one or both men might actually show up tonight. No confirmation of that. It is simply because security has been ex absolutely extraordinary here at the convention hall, and there is talk about possibly sealing off the entire area early this evening. Both men met earlier this afternoon for talks of about an hour, reportedly to begin to iron out more and more of the details of the relationship between the two men. With me right now is Mayor Marion Barry, who has been involved all week long in these negotiations. Can you give us any word, Mr. Mayor, about what you've heard about what happened? Let me say that Jesse Jackson's name being placed in nomination is not symbolic. I know you didn't mean to play that way. Yeah. It is real. Uh, when we came here, when we came to San Francisco in 1984, we had about 400 delegates, about 1,300 now. These delegates have earned the right to vote for Jesse Jackson. He's 1,300 votes, which is about 800 votes short of what you would need to win. So the nomination of Jesse Jackson would be real. 
be democratic, recognizing that whoever gets uh, the 2,000 plus magic number will be our nominee. So it is serious business with us. But more importantly, uh, we've come together on a number of issues, so on the 13 minority, so-called minority platform issues, which we're really the majority. Uh, all except three were ironed out. Uh, and so the Jackson campaign believes in inclusion, believes in involvement, expanding our party. We're not employees of the Democratic Party, we are shareholders and stockholders in it. So this has been one of our best conventions. I've been going to conventions since 1964. I was outside in Atlantic City with Van Lou Hamer. I was in the Chicago Hilton, Conrad uh, Hilton, six day looking down at police beating people, but inside since 72. And we have our best chance to return the Democrats to the White House. But Jesse, Jesse has brought, um, Mayor, also statehood is important too. Jesse Jackson put statehood on the national agenda. And those of us who live in Washington ought to be thankful for Jesse Jackson and also thankful for the government of the caucus for accepting the challenge. Mr. Mayor, so. if I can get him quickly. A couple of days ago, we talked with you. You said that many of the Jackson delegates here were unhappy. They were angry at the treatment that Jesse Jackson had. Has all of that anger dissipated? Is not, everything calm? Not all. But a lot of signals have been sent. A lot of substantive things have been done. We agree on the platform issues that we agreed on. We declared that South Africa the terrorist state is a, is a big improvement. There still is work to be done. When we go back home, the, the caucus campaign is pledged to include the Jackson people at every level, and not only now, but for the future. And so I'm very happy about what's been going on. And perhaps there will be, as Jesse Jackson put it, a Chicago miracle today. Well, Who knows? Maybe Washington miracle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And we're also going to be looking forward tonight to a demonstration and some lobbying, possibly, on the issue of D.C. statehood. It is an issue, as Mayor Barry pointed out, that is part of all of the negotiations involving Jesse Jackson and Michael Dukakis and putting that on the Dukakis agenda. There's a handful of men at this convention who are sharing an experience that none of us can imagine. They are the ones who months ago were trying to get where Michael Dukakis is going to be, standing in the spotlight as the party's nominee. I spent time today with one of those men to find out what it's like to be here when the spotlight has gone out. It can be quite bizarre. Board for USA Today asked me if I came back to Earth as an animal, what animal would I want to come back to Earth as? Uh, I declined to answer. Good morning, everybody. Jerry? There are some things, like those kinds of questions, that Senator Paul Simon does not regret leaving behind, along with his presidential campaign. But as he moved quietly in the background of this convention, shaking hands at small receptions today, we spoke of the sometimes difficult realities of being here in the role of what some consider an also-ran. You, you know what it's like when you're a presidential candidate and you walk in a room, everything stops, you know? When you're not a presidential candidate, even if you are a senator, Life goes on around you. Yeah. It's different. It is very different. And uh, the, the answer is, I would love to be the presidential candidate. I'd love to be the president of the United States. But that's not going to be part of my future. Huh? <laughs> Simon is not alone. The others who tried for the nomination and lost are also here. Each one introduced briefly on the convention floor, but otherwise largely unrecognized sometimes simply ignored. I worked hard for a year and a half to uh, win the nomination, but the reason I was working to win is for a change in the policies of this country, for a democratic victory, and we have an excellent prospect of that now. Some folks dubbed them the Seven Dwarfs. Simon called them a special fraternity of fairly friendly adversaries. There had to have been members of the group that you liked less than other members. Yes, and I won't answer your next question. <laughs> <laughs> there had to have been. Paul Simon spent $18 million and more than 13 months of his life trying to get the nomination of his party. He didn't get close, but he said it was worth it. We'll have more from the convention floor a little later. Dale? Thank you, Renee, and thank you, of course, Mayor Barry, too. Jesse Jackson last night seemed to jump from the television screen into the living rooms and hearts of millions of Americans. Kathleen Matthews talked to some people in our area about the magic of that moment and what it meant to them. When you see Jesse Jackson, when my name goes in nomination, your name goes in nomination. I was born in the slum, 
but Islam was not born in me. Jesse Jackson's speech last night was the culmination of a long and bumpy journey for both him and for a nation. I don't know if he can do it better than Michael Dukakis, but I know he can do it. I just know he can. You are something special. You are a role model to all, all kids, Hispanic, African, black Americans, all, all, all children in the art and all races of people you are inspiration to us all for young people like these who stayed up late to watch jackson last night it's often hard to comprehend that until 24 years ago blacks in some areas were prevented even from voting in 1963 a half million people marched down this avenue in washington fighting for civil rights and here it is just 20 years later and many people can imagine a black man marching down this same avenue on the way to his inaugural they wonder why does jesse run because they see me running for the White House. They don't see the house I'm running from. As sure as there's a God in heaven, it's going to happen one day. The black man's going to be in the White House. Jesse has opened the way that we will have a black president. And it's not where you were born, it's where you're going. I was born a teenage mother. Who was born a teenage mother? I go back in my mother and father's day, they both come from the old country, so they were a minority, and I still think it's just, you see a change today, the same thing my parents went through. We got to go out, my friends, for the big boat song. And they thought that the black man couldn't do it. I repeat, he's just another man. If the other man can do it, so can Jesse. So run, Jesse, run. I'm Kathleen Matthews, News 7. I'm off an ass. And just in case you didn't know, Jesse Jackson is not the first black to run for the presidency. There have been others, most notably Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm. That was back in 1972. Well, sports is coming up next with Kevin Kiley and Frank Herzog tonight, live in Carlisle. We'll get reaction to reports that Dexter Manley is under investigation for substance abuse. And then a little later, Jimmy Connors takes to the courts at the D.C. tennis tournament. We'll be right back. Enough. Deal. Did somebody say deal? Your Dodge dealer has hot numbers and big rebates on almost everything in stock. Get a hot Dodge Daytona, save up to 590. Dodge Shadow, save up to 600. Or Dakota Pickup, save up to 2250. So if you want a great deal, hey! Well, are you going to deal? Did somebody say deal? Deal. <laughs> Discover the freshest coffee we've ever put into a vacuum bag. It's Roaster Fresh and it's Maxwell House. Our exclusive process takes us from roaster to grinder to vacuum bag faster than any other leading brand. Up to one full day faster. Maxwell House Coffee. It's Roaster Fresh and always good to the last drop. Switch this weekend and save. Look for our coupon in Sunday's paper. I don't like being bugged, so I take care of it. I give it my best shot. Hot shot, flying insect, killer. I don't mess around with something that's not gonna work. Hot shot takes care of what's bugging you. Go ahead, make my day. Give it your best shot, hot shot. They're here with a whole new act. Grapevine Tour, only at Hardee's. Buy any two Rise and Shine biscuits or any dessert and collect an all-new California Raisin figurine for just 99 cents. A new rocker or roller each week. Collect all six only at Hardee's because we're out to win you over. Kevin Kiley now with the latest on the Dexter Manley controversy. Yeah, Dexter's kicking up a fuss here. Even though he's not in training camp, Dexter Manley has moved to the center of the news. The Washington Post reported last night that Dexter was under investigation by the NFL after recently testing positive for an unknown minor substance. It's an unknown substance. Dexter's attorney at 5 o'clock would not confirm the story, but I got Dexter's thoughts on it in an exclusive interview this afternoon. Do you have concerns that you may not be able to play for the Redskins at any time this year? No, I'm basically, I'm a real positive thinker, and 
Uh, I don't see no reason why I should even consider that. Um, I like to think that, you know, uh, I have done, you know, my job on and off the field, and I, I don't even think that that should even be an issue to me as, as far as concerning the, the should I be able to play football or not. Um, I think that's what God has given me the talent for, and, and I've been able to transform that into other things outside the football field. I, um, I've been a, a big asset, you know, with, with the Washington Redskins and with the league in itself. So how, how, why, why would I even consider me not playing with the Redskins this year? Carlisle begins at uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, you're expected in Carlisle, 6 o'clock Saturday evening. Will you be there? I'll be right there. I am very looking forward to getting ready for uh, Saturday. There's no questions about it. I'm always ready. Dexter expressed genuine concern about the problem. I asked him if he had a drug problem. He said, no, he does not have a drug problem. Concern, I'm sure, is not just Dexter's, Frank. I think probably up in Carlisle there is some concern about the situation, too. Puzzlement. Um, you know, it was interesting, Kevin, that I heard you at 5 o'clock Dexter say that he seemed to be puzzled about exactly what Pete Rosell wants to talk about on Friday. Well, that was a reaction here. You talk about timing. <laughs> there was nothing going on at Carlisle today. One practice, it's tonight, and it is a scrimmage involving the rookies and free agents and few veterans who are here. We wondered today about their reaction to the news from coaches and established players. It's the players who knows about it. I mean, we was out here today, and nobody seemed affected by it, but I'm sure deep down inside, uh, everybody got to feel something because Dex is a big part of his football team. The league's going to have to get back to us with what the situation is, and uh, so I don't have any information, so there's nothing I can do about it right now. Coaches worry about distractions. Does this qualify as one? Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. I think Dexter's uh, been a very big part of what we've done here. Uh, he's part of our family and one of the guys we care about, so hopefully this will get resolved here. I'll wait until they have the hearing, and uh, uh, I think once, once the hearing has taken place, then uh, We'll all know. Players and officials to the man said they were surprised by the news today. One other bit of news for you today, Kevin. They're still looking for running backs. They signed Willard Reeves. He played for the Canadian Football League Winnipeg Blue Bombers last year and led the league in rushing. He'll be here tomorrow. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Frank. And we'll keep in touch with Dexter's story. There was some upheaval at the Tour de France today. Overall leader Pedro Delgado has tested positive for drugs, and he has requested a second analysis of the specimen taken after last, last Friday's time trial. Delgado faces a fine, but also a penalty of 10 minutes, which would drop him from the lead of the Tour de France. Gianni Bugno won the 18th leg. He's from Italy, a 58-mile distance from Ruel to Limoges in southwestern France. He was part of a small group that broke away from the pack, then he and Belgium's John Nevins made a late spurt, spurt for the finish. 16-year-old Michael Chang is growing up fast. A teenager from California made some noise out at Rock Creek this afternoon. He upset number 12 seated Jim Pugh. Also, Jimmy Connors playing Jimmy Brown here. Connors in the far court had a pretty easy time of it. He moves Brown out of position. And as Jimmy has done for years, will put him away with a little forehand down the line. Hits him where he ain't. The great ones always seem to be the lucky ones, too. Watch Jimmy catch the top of the net. And takes Jimmy Brown in straight sets, 6-2, 6-3. We'll have more of everything for you. The is a lot of it. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. We are getting some very, very heavy rain in Washington at this hour. Are we in for more of it tonight? Jerry Brown joins us with a very steamy and a wet forecast coming up next. And then we'll be going back live to Atlanta for a preview of what's ahead tonight at the Democratic National Convention. Stay with us. Greg Norman, the white shark. Hi, guys. Greg, where do you get all that power when you drive, huh? Amico Ultimate. Amico Ultimate? 93 octane. Better than power for my car. Come on, what do you know about gasoline? Nothing. My car knows. 93 Octane Amico Ultimate for pure power and performance. Your car knows. Okay, Greg, we're hooked. Never say hook to the white shark. Cool off with the sweetest deals of the year at your Washington area Chevy dealers. Up to $750 cash back on S10 pickups and Blazers, including 4x4s. Cash back on Cavalier, Nova, Corsica, and Beretta. 
all from the people who always offer you 24 models under $10,000. It's a Chevy Summer. Your Washington area Chevy dealers. So let's get on TV. Let's see. Let's see if this clown can take a picture. If he's on the ball, he'll go to People's Drug and get one set of prints and a new roll of film. Or, for the same low price, he can choose two sets of prints. Plus, a special reward. A big bonus 5x7 print, free. That clown's no dummy. That's gonna be a hit. People's Drug. The convenience you want. The savings you deserve. These are Popeye's new fried Cajun crawfish. They're nicey, spicy, not too pricey, and take it from me, everybody loves mm, them. Good. Even Bob. Popeye's new fried Cajun crawfish come on a platter with golden fries, fresh tossed salad, and a big buttermilk biscuit for only $3.99. I love these. Bob loves them. You'll love them. But hurry, Popeye's new fried Cajun crawfish are only here for a short time, and you're gonna love them. Take it from me. And Bob. And Bob. I love these. The rains have hit with a vengeance. I'm wondering, Jerry, are there any watches or warnings that came with them? No, the Weather Service has not issued any severe thunderstorm watches or warnings so far for our area, Dale. We're not talking about the 60 mile an hour wind gusts or three quarter inch hail, but there is some pretty good lightning embedded in them. We've had those reports and very heavy downpours locally, which is very good. We need the rain. We've been saying that for uh, weeks now, but that is true. Let's see where we stand right now. It's 86 out at National Airport. These are the Dulles statistics, which uh, Dulles was reporting a thunderstorm at the top of the hour. Look at that, 72. 97% the relative humidity, of course, it's up there. The pressure is rising north-northeast winds at uh, 8 miles an hour. And you can see the air quality and uh, the pollen readings uh, have been affected by the rain. They are certainly better than they have been in times past. Let me move over here. I'll just tell you, on this date, uh, July 20th, 1930, 106 degrees. Now, that is Washington, D.C.'s all-time a record high. They also tied it back in 1918. It was also 106. Didn't quite make it up there today. It was in the uh, lower 90s. Here's how we stand right now. The heat is on out in the western U.S. clear skies. We've got a frontal system that's going to be moving slowly through our area as low pressure moves along it. We're going to be talking about thunderstorms in the afternoon through the week and very muggy conditions with a mix of clouds and rain. Let's go to the radar now because I know that's what uh, most people want to see right now. Here is the line of precipitation, thunderstorms moving to the east at about 20 miles an hour. I'm going to zoom in right now and let me give you your bearings. IAD, that is Dulles Airport. We do have some thunderstorms out to the west and north of that in Loudoun County moving uh, to the east into Montgomery County shortly. DCA, there's a thunderstorm just to the east of that in Prince George's County. And some heavy stuff it looks like down in Charles County moving uh, off into St. Mary's County. We've also had some reports of very heavy thunderstorms up in north central Maryland. Just a little thunder activity right now. This stuff's going to be around at least for the next uh, couple of hours, so uh, stay alert. But as I said, uh, nothing severe from the Weather Service yet. Let's go to our forecast. And uh, it reads like this, overnight tonight, the scattered showers and thunderstorms, it's going to be incredibly muggy, 70 to 75 degrees. Winds will persist uh, from the southwest throughout our forecast period. More muggy conditions tomorrow with the scattered showers and thunderstorms, pretty much a repeated today with a high around 90 degrees. And ditto on Friday, maybe a degree or two cooler, but it's still muggy clouds, some sun, scattered showers and thunderstorms. And that's going to continue again into the weekend with temperatures around 90, 91 degrees. All right, thank you, Jerry. You know, it's going to be one big warm night in Atlanta, too. This is the night the Democrats nominate their candidate for president. In all likelihood, Michael Dukakis, barring a Chicago miracle. Let's go to Susan King now, live in Atlanta, for a preview. Hi, Dale. The big local story here in Atlanta was how many delegates were locked out last night, couldn't get in, so a lot of delegates are filing in here right now. Senator Nunn was one who couldn't get in for the Jackson speech. A word about what you see. Even before the uh, uh, Atlanta Treaty on Monday, both the Jackson and Dukakis forces planned who would be getting primetime exposure. The big speech for tonight will be from Coretta Scott King. She will be stressing unity. She will be pre-primetime about 8.15. The Dukakis nomination will really top primetime at about top of nine, a southern governor, Arkansas's Bill Clinton, will put Dukakis's name into nomination, and there are rumors here that Dukakis will show up be the first time since Adlai Stevenson. That is unclear. That win will be followed by the nomination of Jesse Jackson. He will be nominated by a black woman, a union leader, and an Hispanic. Uh, it is a symbolic gesture, but history will be made tonight, and no one thinks that it will uh, not be an it will be an afterthought. It will be an important moment. Dion, Dion Warwick will close out the night with a big resounding God bless America or that's what friends are for. And I guess, Renee, friends is a, a good way to probably end it because the Dukakis-Jackson forces are really trying to show that there's some unity there. And there was even sort of personal meetings this afternoon developing more 
a friendship because there hasn't really been one up to this time. Absolutely. I think they're using the time here at the convention to cement that relationship that's going to continue on through the campaign, and it'll be very interesting to see how it goes. Will, we'll have the latest for you live from Atlanta on the Late Edition. Dale? Thank you both, and we will see you both tonight at 11. Also coming up tonight on the Late Edition, the very latest on that plane crash at Dulles Airport. We'll show you where many people are going to escape this week's Democratic convention. And in Henry's Choice, Henry Tenenbaum shows us one alternative can be found at the Kennedy Center. It is Wenceslas Square. He was a good theater director, people said. That'd be great, be great. You'll see little kids come up to you. You gotta stick a gun, you can lead them all into the river. Great. That and more coming up tonight. And that's it for News 7 at 6 o'clock for this Wednesday evening. I'm Dale Solly. Thank you. World News Tonight is next, and we'll see you tonight at 11 o'clock. Have a great night, everybody. For under six